Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and this is the 11400F, and I'm going to be explaining why I think you should be buying one of these CPUs sooner and a lot sooner rather than later, especially if you're looking to upgrade or if you're looking to build a new PC. Because all my research and analysis, as well as speaking to retailers, directly points towards buying sooner than later. So let's get into those explanations right after this sponsor spot. If you want to get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 12 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Links in the description below. So currently you can get the 11400F for $175. And in fact, I saw the price go up $3 when I was initially uh, doing work with the 11400F CPU. So it's already technically increased in price based on street values. Now there are some indicators and some strong indicators based on what Intel's told me and based on the fact that you should purchase an 11400F. And one of those big reasons was I was told that the 11700F and subsequently the 11100F and all the B560 and H510 motherboards would be available on day one. And yet when I look around, I am not seeing all these CPUs and all these motherboards available on day one. In fact, Australia, I'd say that the 11400F is one of the better buy CPUs that really is only in stock compared to 11700F. But if we take the 11700, which is currently available, but the 11700F isn't, we can then look at the value proposition there and we can see that it's nowhere near as good as a value proposition as the 10400F versus the 11400F. But let's go through these gaming benchmark numbers, 1080p with an RTX 3090, and I did use the best motherboards for all the CPUs here, the Ryzen's and the Intel CPUs, but I will make note that I also have tested the 11400F on a H510 motherboard. We will talk about that a little bit later, but going through some of the numbers here, we can see the 11400F is in front of the 10400F and the Ryzen 5 3600. And I do highlight these CPUs in red because I believe they are the two direct competitors to this CPU, especially when we're looking at a pure value for money standpoint. Moving over to F1 2020 shows the exact same trend and scenario forming. However, the 10700F, don't overlook this CPU because as we get into the productivity numbers later, you'll see exactly why. And it does score a victory here over the 11700F, as well as having the i7 branding attached to it, which is a powerful thing if you wish to resell in the future. But going to Dota 2 showed that the 11400F and the 10400F relatively similar CPUs here. I mean, one FPS is really nothing, especially when you're getting over 200 FPS in this particular title. And same with the Ryzen 5 3600, absolutely fine in this game. Call of Duty Cold War showing again, the same similar trend that we've been seeing before. And then lastly, CSGO showing that the 11400F is no joke indeed. However, the 5600X, you'll notice that that's pretty much chart topping numbers in a lot of the titles and that CPU itself, AMD do like to put a price tag on that and it's much higher than the other three CPUs that we're gonna be taking a look at in terms of value for money. Now, before we move on to the productivity numbers, I'm actually going to pull up a graph here, which I think is one of the most important graphs. And that is the productivity value based on the street pricing based off a Geekbench 5 multi-test score, which will give you a value of how good the 11400F is in terms of value for money, especially at the current price point of $175. This one is an absolute no-brainer. And as I said before, if you are thinking about getting an upgrade from say a four core previous uh, fourth gen i7 four core, or if you're looking to build a new gaming PC very soon, even if you can't purchase the graphics card right now, I wouldn't be concerned about that because if you wait for the graphics card to be in stock, the prices of this CPU and motherboard could easily go up. But I will explain that very soon. Let's just move through these Adobe Premiere Pro numbers. If you're into editing videos, especially at 4K, the 11400F will suffice. It will do an absolutely fine job. Just keep in mind, if you are 4K video editing, one of the most important things you can get for yourself is more memory as well as a decent graphics card, which either supports CUDA or OpenCL. Over to another multi-threaded rendering benchmark here, the 11400F doing absolutely fine, beating that of the 3600 and the 10400F, then the Geekbench 5 numbers for you guys to see directly. We can see the 11400F single core performance is also just as impressive as its multi-core performance. And then showing the seven zip numbers, here's where the Ryzen 5 3600 does pull ahead. So if you have a zip rendering farm, if you're one of those unique people that does this, then you may wish to look at a Ryzen CPU over an Intel CPU, even the latest 11th gen. But then V-Ray reverts back to the norm of the 11400F continuing to be a better performer as well as better value for money 
than the Ryzen 5 3600 and 10 400F. And then lastly, we've got the Cinebench results up here for you guys, just like V-Ray shows the exact same thing. But you're probably thinking up until this point, Brian, the 11 400F it just is too good value for money. What is going on? There's got to be some kind of drawback here. And the only drawback I could see within my testing that I've done recently is when you couple it with a H510 or even a B560, you could come into some, I guess, hurdles, and that involves the power limits. So the CPU here does run a little bit higher, especially over that of the 3600 and 10400F, where in the Cinebench R20 results, I did measure power consumption that did go up to around 107 watts, as opposed to the 3600 scoring just over 80 and the 10400F in the mid 70s. This does correlate too to the gaming performance as well. Whilst I was playing games, I did notice the power consumption was pretty much in perfect correlation to these maximum power consumption numbers too. And that the 11400F will use up considerably more power while you're gaming to the point of around 75 watts versus that of the 3600 and the 10400F, which actually come in under 50 watts on both these CPUs. And the 10400F, believe it or not, having the best efficiency when it comes to gaming, at least from the tests that I've done of all these CPUs in this graph right here. So that's the only drawback I can see with the 11400F and the fact that if you buy a cheaper motherboard, you may have to go into the BIOS and disable some of the power limits or up them to the maximum lengths and times and wattage limits so you can get more performance out of your CPU whilst you're even gaming. And that can affect your gaming performance just as much as it can affect the productivity performance of this CPU. But the last question you may have is why is the power consumption high? And that's because the 11400F is on still on 14 nanometer and it's clocked 200 megahertz higher where you've got a 4.2 gigahertz all core speed versus the 10400F which has a four gigahertz all core speed. So you've got, I guess, a more power hungry architecture on the same node and you've got it 200 megahertz higher. So that'll explain why it's using more power. So now it's time for the part that you've probably been waiting for and that is the economics part and everything to do with the 11400F and why you should definitely be buying one of these CPUs now rather than later. And the biggest reason for that is simply the amount of money printing going on with central banks. And it's one of the themes that I'm gonna keep, uh, I guess, emphasizing here, the importance of buying now rather than later. And the later just points towards uh, not just inflation. I've heard people say this, oh, Brian, inflation's normal. Inflation's a normal thing. And stable, relatively low inflation is a normal thing. And it can be decent for a society to implement, I guess, stable inflation of 2%. But I'm seeing, and what I'm seeing is anything but stable inflation. I'm only seeing high inflation in regards to a lot of goods out there and a lot of services. So when you have high inflation, it destroys economies and it destroys pricing. And this is one thing that you can talk to people in Venezuela about, Argentina is another one. These guys come out in the comment section and they say, yes, this does indeed destroy pricing and economies. So when we look at the i5 and we look at the fact that it's still under $200 and it's carrying six cores, 12 threads, as opposed to traditionally carrying four cores, four threads, then you can see that you're actually getting a very good deal in terms of the pricing of $175 now, where $175 back when a 2400 was released would have probably been maybe $250 now. So you are getting a better deal, coupled with the fact that we are seeing a trend of shortages or so-called shortages out there in the market. I mean, what comes next after DDR4? Is there gonna be a shortage on uh, SATA controllers on motherboards? Is there gonna be a shortage of USB 3 controllers? Is there gonna be a shortage of, I guess, HD audio? So there's a lot of risks that you take by not buying now rather than later and holding on in the hope that prices will get cheaper because it's my belief that prices will not get cheaper. And that's because if we look at the Ryzen CPUs, they're already higher than they were. The Ryzen 5 3600, for example, that used to be around $180. You could even see it for $160 at times. Now it's up to $240. So when we look at the i5 11400F, we can see that it's in stock, or at least it's coming in stock. If I look at Amazon, it's coming in stock in about a week's time at this price point. The motherboards, the, you can still pick up a H510 motherboard for just a little over $70. This is representing extremely good value for money. And I would not hesitate to go buy this right now based on its pricing. If I needed to go get a CPU and motherboard, I would have no qualms. In fact, I went and bought this because I liked the value proposition it was giving and I wanted to do some content around it. And I was really surprised at how good the value for money is. There was a few caveats that did make it a good buy as opposed to a great buy. A great buy, in my opinion, has no flaws 
and the power consumption, in my opinion, was a flaw. But I think the most important thing is to go back on this shortages topic, because what we're seeing here is a trend in the tech industry, and that is that there's shortages, right? There's shortages on chips that are being produced for cars. There's shortages of chips that are being produced for now. They're saying that DDR4 is going to be in shortage, and there's obviously a shortage of graphics cards, especially when it comes to meeting the demand. And when I speak to people like NVIDIA, for example, they're they're telling me that there is no essentially supply shortage with RTX 3000 cards. They've actually ramped up production and making more RTX 3000 cards than they made RTX 2000 cards. So now it becomes a demand problem where demand is over that of previous demand in the industry. And one can only wonder why this demand is a lot higher than it's previously been. And I mean, I think I know the answer, and that is the central banks of pretty much every country in the world right now is just doing what they call money printing. And that is the creation of money. When you create money out of thin air, it essentially has a lot less value than it did before. So in other words, your dollar's purchasing power is going to be eroded by the fact that money is being handed out a lot freer than it ever was. You don't have to work for that money anymore. It's gonna have less value to you. And so when people get these stimulus checks and they borrow this money where the banks have now relaxed regulations and they can borrow that money easier, they now have a less value placed on the money itself because it's easier to obtain. That's just natural in ways of any goods and services. The more scarce it is, the more desirable it's going to be. All other things being equal, of course. Now, of course, there are people out there that are gonna get stimulus checks and they need those stimulus checks. They need it to get food, they need it to pay for bills, but there's also a great portion of people out there that get those stimulus checks and they just go on Twitter, for example, and they go literally bragging about dropping their stimmy check on anything and even just dropping it on cryptocurrencies. I mean, that in itself is just not really helping the economy at all. It's a consumption-based stimulus check in that regard. It's not helping productivity. It's not helping survival of people. It's just really adding to inflation. That's the only thing that sense of money is being spent in. And so when we look at the trends where money's never been cheaper, essentially, that just means that there's never been such a big supply of dollars. And when you have an oversupply of something, its value becomes less. So I'm talking about the actual value of a dollar going down. And that's why you're seeing the higher prices and you're seeing them rise substantially quickly in a lot of different industries, especially when we are artificially creating more demand for tech products due to the nature of the coronavirus. And so it's based on this research and these beliefs that you should go out and buy an 11400F sooner rather than later. And don't be one of those people, I mean, in this case, I wouldn't be one of those people that just goes out and buys one and then tries to reflip it two months later because you could have bought those goods with that money. Say for instance, you wanted to get a bicycle. The price of the bicycle is probably gonna go up in two months anyway. So even if you buy the CPU now and you make a nominal profit, of $80 on it, you reflip it for $240 in two months time, the price of your bicycle might've gone up as well. And so that's what inflation does. It raises the prices of everything. And even if you think you're making a nominal profit, you're actually not making a true or real realized profit. So with all that said, if you envision yourself in the next week or next few months needing a CPU, then go out and buy an 11400F sooner rather than later and subsequently a motherboard and also DDR4 memory before the media and news sites spit out shortage. That's what they're gonna tell you. There's a shortage of everything. When in essence, as we've explained in this video, I don't think it's a shortage. I just think it's an oversupply of dollars. And so with that in mind, it's better to go get something sooner or later. And actually we'll answer the question of the day while we're on this topic, because it relates to other things you can do too, which is smart to look at if you're in the market for purchasing a CPU right now. And this comes from Winnie Zong, and they ask 150 bucks for a 10600, great deal. And yes, this was uh, 150 Aussie dollars too, which 120 something USD. So a great deal if you can look on the used market and go grab an i5 10600 or a 10400F, and also even looking at things like a 10700F, which if you want a better motherboard, you can still get Z490 motherboards for really good prices. So the 10900F, I like the look of that as well, 10 cores, 20 threads, especially when we contrast and compare that to the new Ryzen 5th gen CPUs and now even the Ryzen 3rd gen CPUs where their prices are going up a lot faster than the Intel CPUs. So, I mean, when I look at that a little bit closer, there's definitely the brand loyalty of AMD over Intel. That would be making people want to purchase the AMD side of things more. But when it really comes down to it, these brands, they've proven time and time again that they are not loyal to use. So I don't know why in turn people repay these companies with the inverse and they give them all their loyalty. 
I think in my opinion, it's one of the weirdest things I see in tech, especially when the evidence is there and it points to anything but. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comments section below what you think of the 11400F and also all the tech shortages that are going on at the moment. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.